The stars, now they were magnificent. As we laid under the bright white lights, listening to the waves dancing on the sandy shore. We woke the next day, invigorated with excitement of what was to come. Hi guys, welcome to Expedition Jack, another episode for you. Today I'm very excited to say that we are in Wales, South Pembrokeshire and uh, we're here today to do a collaboration with a coastal forager called Craig Evans. We watch him all the time, he's amazing and he knows so much stuff. To an uneducated eye like myself, um, I just think it's all bush, like nothing you can eat, eat there basically. But he's just been telling us like, oh yeah that's edible, that's edible, that's edible. And today in this video you're going to see how many things we can eat here <laughs> it's unbelievable and just sort of the myths about poisonous plants and stuff like that just don't be too scared but you always be 100 percent you get it one wrong once you're gonna be either on the toilet the whole day <laughs> or uh in hospital so it's not great very excited for today wales is amazing we've got the weather which is a first for wales <laughs> vegetation uh sort of foraging first uh i think he said we're going to do um, some seafood foraging so more oysters when the level has dropped because this is an estuary right now the level's going to drop then it will open up a lot then we're going to change location and get some more sort of razor clams and more seafoody stuff and maybe some crabs so fingers crossed so i'm here with craig evans yeah hello, hello. you know everything about coastal foraging down here well i hope so and uh because the thing is i actually run coastal foraging courses yeah and um I enjoy taking people out and showing them what we have to offer here in uh, in South West Wales and we are really blessed with the type of different environments and the different foods we have and uh, it, it, it's a pleasure to live and and a real pleasure to show people who, are, who don't know about this type of thing mm, uh, like me. <laughs> what, what, what we have and, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's like me showing off I'm really proud of what we, what we have you know? yeah. yeah yeah so we've got the right guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to uh, our salad bar on the estuary. Uh, plenty of uh, uh, veg to eat, and the thing is, uh, you could actually die from vitamin C poisoning. There's so much plants to eat, you know. And what's here? Well, we'll show you later on now. There's a number of um, plants, edible plants. This is called sea purslane. It's uh, a bit of a succulent. It's delicious if you. Uh, Chop it up and eat it raw, mashed with the mashed potatoes. It's del delicious. It's uh, really, uh, really nice. Mm. Do you want to try a bit? Yeah, thank you. Look at the salt on it. Yeah, yeah a bit salty though. <laughs> yeah, what it does, it, uh, it gets rid of the salt through its leaves. Sea lavender. Now, uh, three weeks ago, this would have been all bright purple, small flowers. Beautiful plant. But you can eat the uh, eat the leaves and. Uh, it's all right, but yeah. um, it's a succulent. Do you want to try a little bit? Yeah. It's got more taste than the other one. Mm -hmm. Now next to it, we've got a member of the daisy family then, called the sea aster. Now, I find these delicious. If you uh, eat some of these, we'll take some back and we'll stir fry them. Yeah. Totally different taste to these. Do you get it? I like this one. <laughs> yeah, most, most people like, uh, like sea aster. Oh. Delicious. More like a salad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and as we go down now, mm -hmm. down towards the uh, the waterline, plants which are more salt tolerant, we can get things like marsh samphire. Now another name for it is glasswort, because many years ago, before they discovered how to mine potash, they used to burn this and use the ash to make and make glass with. Oh. So this is delicious. Mm -hmm. Have a taste of that. Okay also known as sea asparagus. Uh, it looks a bit like asparagus. Mm -hmm. yeah. They all taste salty. <laughs> yeah, well, they, well, they would. <laughs> well, they would. Fresh. Plenty of it, but the thing is, it's uh, it's past its best now, coming to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Starting to go yellow. Yeah. And they're annuals, so that means that they'll uh, seed, and the next year's growth will come from the new seeds. Mm -hmm. This is called sea bite, this is. Got a quite, quite a strong taste as well. Something familiar. Yeah. Mm. I like this. Yeah. Some do, some don't. 
I, I, I quite like siesta and yeah, that fits very nice. And some fire. Right, we're now down at the shoreline, which is uh, obviously uh, marine. As you can see, we've got seaweed and various algae and, and the mud. And as we come up then towards towards the land, you've got the most salt tolerant plants then, which are the marsh samphire. We come a bit further up, other plants like like sea bite. And uh, there aren't many other plants that can survive in this habitat. So further up, uh, the sea lavender. Then sea aster. Hmm. Yeah. Then we get a very common plant in this habitat then, it's uh, the uh, sea purslane. And you find around the estuaries of, of the UK thousands of acres of, of this plant growing. Thousands of acres. And we come up then towards the hedgerows and then we've got uh, Hawthorne. Oh, can you eat these berries? Yeah, so these berries now, uh, we'll eat some later on. They are... have we tried them before? No. Yeah. no. I'll we'll try with that. Is it got a big pip inside? Spit the pip out, but you find that it's got a mealy taste to the the flesh. Mm. Mm. It is like uh, one of the um, mm. thing I had in China. It's more like a bit sour. It, it's a lot bigger though. It's about that size. That I have like six C's in it. Okay. Yeah, it's very uh, taste. Tastes same, very uh, similar to does that. Does it? Okay. Mm. I like this. Hmm. In the UK in particular, lots of birds come from all over Northern Europe to feed on these in the winter. Huh? Uh, mainly the thrush families, like red wings and field fares and things. And blackbirds eat them. But apart from just the uh, the trees, mm -hmm. now it's come out of the uh, marine environment. We then come to sea beet, also known as sea spinach. This is the ancestor of... Uh, of all beetroots and uh, can we cook some of this later on? And what's interesting about this plant in particular, it's evergreen. So in the winter, once all the other plants have died away, this will stay as it is. And uh, many years ago, people used to eat this as a supplement to get vitamin C in the time when there wasn't uh, much source of vitamin C available. Do you like it? Mm. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll cook it with butter and other sea vegetables. Little. Then we've got the old uh, wild plums or slows. Have you eaten these before? No. Don't. Okay. Oh. Right. They're not poisonous, but they're very, very astringent and bitter. Oh, then you, you, right. you, you're welcome to try one. Not poisonous. Okay. Yeah, try. But just put a bit on your tongue, and then your tongue will probably dry up. It's I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to throw up, am I? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, it is quite dry. Yeah. I like the taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, this is what we use to make slow gin. Mm. And that's easy to make. Pick these now, because they're the best. Make little holes in them. Uh, get an empty gin bottle, a quarter bottle of, of these, mm -hmm. a quarter bottle of just normal sugar, top it up with gin, uh, put the top on, give it a shake, and leave it until about uh, three months Christmas time. And there you have lovely slow gin. Mm. Delicious flavours. Oh, yeah. It's not the worst taste. I mean, it's mm. very dry. It does dry your throat oh, yes, up yeah. really quickly. Oh yes. But it's I like it. flavouring for gin, yeah. and it'll give it a lovely pinky, reddy colour as well. Mm. Mm. The aftertaste tastes very like blueberry. Looking down again, we've got um, different kind of plant now. This this plant, one of the goosefoot family. It's past its best. It's called, also called Good King Henry. Uh, it's called goosefoot because of the shape of the leaves. It looks like a goosefoot. Yeah, but uh, again, edible. Have a little taste if you like. Mm. Very crispy. Mm. It's all there, plenty of it, and provided everybody practices conservation by not taking too much mm -hmm. from one place, there's enough to go down. Co common plants in the right habitat. Look at the amount of food on there. If you're out for a walk or out fishing, and all you've got to do if you you know, get a handful of these and you can be nib nib nibbling away yeah. as you're walking, you know. Just knowing what you can eat mm. and what yeah, you yeah, can't. Yeah. Do we have any sort of poisonous stuff here in the UK? The odd stuff. Most of the poisonous plants are imported um, and the naturalised uh, immigrants. They're, there's things like um, bittersweet, which is a member of the uh, potato tomato family. Right. Um, Lovely looking berries, but if you eat those, they might well, they taste lovely and sweet, but if you eat too many, they'll kill you. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. So there is, there is. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> and the thing is, uh, yew trees as well. If you eat the yew leaves, that 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 can kill you. It's very toxic. However, I don't recommend anybody do this, but I do it. Um, on yew trees, you get red berries called not berries called arils. There's a, there's a pip inside, which you mustn't eat under any circumstances. But you can eat the uh, the surrounding is like a, a jelly type sweet substance and it's, it's delicious mm. so, so I don't recommend anybody do it but some people do and you can actually make jam from it as well it's, it's yeah. delicious but the, yeah. all other parts of, of the, the yew tree are poisonous even the sawdust if you're sawing it if you breathe in the dust that's poisonous as well <laughs> so yeah the liberties mm. you can make wine with them or cordial but don't eat them raw, they give an upset stomach and they can be poisonous, so they, they need to be cooked first of all. And uh, you know, in uh, in June time, when there's the flowers, the white flowers, it makes delicious cordial. Yeah. All of these berries, I've seen a lot of these around and thought, I wonder if you could eat them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they, you, you can eat them, you can have a taste, but spit the pips out, okay? It's, uh, they're uh, a little bit bittersweet. Yeah. So even though we're uh, on the coast, right next to salt water, you know, we've got... Um, Hawthorns, apples, elderberries, sloes, and many different species of edible plant. Yeah. Loads of stuff. And we haven't gone into salt water yet. No. no. <laughs> what we're going to do um, later on is another apple tree down the corner. We're going to gather some of those, we're going to chop them up, and we're going to uh, mash them up and cook them a bit to put in with our mussels to give them a bit of a citrus taste. Yeah. Tastes a bit like a cider apple, that one. Not bad, sir. Yeah. Good, Mikey. <laughs> so we'll uh, gather a few of these and then we'll uh, cook them with the, uh, the food on the beach. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Tree and sea. This plant is uh, sea rocket or sea lettuce now. It's uh, edible. It looks a bit like dandelions and very, very bitter. So if you like bitterness in your salad, they would be delicious, but not to my taste. And to show you now. So they're all a member of the same family, like lettuce and dandelions, because they'll have this little white sap that come out on the ends, which is the bitterness of it. Do you, do you like bitter? No. No? Okay. <laughs> well, Thank you. But some people do, and a small bit in a salad can make a difference. That's oyster. Oyster! Yay! It's quite big, actually. Wow, that is big. Yeah. Yay! How long do you think this horse has been? How know. many years? How many years? Yeah. Why, are they really old? I don't know, Craig, yeah, how long? Yeah, with oysters. You can tell the age of an oyster by counting these little ripples. Okay. And each one of those is like a like a tree ring, so that's one season's growth, you know? One season? Yeah. So okay. Because the thing is, it, it'll grow slower in the winter than the summer. Okay. So that's why you get the lines. So you'll have this oyster now. By counting them, it's probably about 10 years old, somewhere. 10 years old oyster? Yeah, yeah. It's not going to end up really well after this 10 years of life. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> not going to end up in my belly. Yeah, it'd be nice. <gasps> tr tr trust me, they're delicious. So we've just been coming back round now, and actually the level of the estuary has fallen so much that we can get oysters now. Ding, ding. Uh, we've got to go and find him, because he's yeah. been off... Uh, for oysters. Getting loads easier. It's been going around getting loads. But we've got to move location before the tide goes to the lowest. Goes to the lowest. Yeah. Today is actually the lowest tide of the month. Yeah. And then later we're going to cook it up, fry it up on the beach on a log. Fire log, even. Yeah. Swedish fire log. This is Sudia Neva, 
They are a set of compact wireless Bluetooth earphones that deliver clear sound even in the busiest environments. They are Android and iOS compatible with a playtime of three and a half hours before charging. No worries, as they come with a portable lightweight charging case which holds four extra charges, extending the playtime up to 17 and a half hours. It has a built-in microphone for hands-free phone calls with easy access play, pause and skip controls on the side. They come in a selection of colors, white, black, blue and pink with a one-year warranty included. Get 15% off by using the discount code EXPEDITIONJACK15. You can follow the link in the description below. Yeah. Okay. So you grab it then. Right there. That's one. And the other one's gone back down. So put a bit more salt in. It comes up one. Really comes up a little bit. And you can grab it. When you grab it then it'll try and pull itself back. It keeps sustained pressure on. And there we are. It's quite a big one. Hey! Now that's quite rare because that, that came up by itself. I didn't have to do anything to that. Yeah. So different species than the other ones, see? Yeah. They're good eating. Eat them raw or cooked. There you go. Can you see that in there? Yeah. Oh. And uh, what they do, they, they are edible, but that's not very big. The only meat worthwhile is in the legs. And the crabs, when they're uh, Eat, eat in size, they're, they're about that big. So uh, what they do is they uh, encourage growths of seaweed and algae on them as a form of camouflage. They can't, they can't really bite. So they're quite, but uh, if you feel it, it's uh, quite spiky. Oh yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, quite, quite harmless. Mm -hmm. Put it back there and I'll have a feel mm. better. Hey. I think we've got a velvet swimming crab. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Bury there in the mud. It's a male velvet swimming crab. Delicious there. Yeah. You've got red eyes? Yeah. They're called velvet crabs. You feel the back of it. It's nice and uh, velvety. And uh, quite aggressive crabs either. <laughs> it's a nice meat in the, in the... They don't get much bigger than that. The thing is, all, the, all these juices, you know, they, from the environment point of view. Can you, can you pick up on the the algae there? The red, the red, yeah, the coralline algae, and these are volcano barnacles. These are for all those reasons. And we've got uh, mussel beds, and we've got plumes and anemones. They look like jelly now, but when the tide comes in, they'll elongate to about that long. And they'll have like feathery plumes to catch their food. White plumes and anemone. And uh, really delicious mussels. Yeah, you know, there's, you know, there must be tons and tons in weight of other mussels. Oh, that's the one we're going to eat, isn't it? Yeah. And the edible crab, but it's too small. I'll put it back in. Yeah, these need to be about that big before becoming edible. We'll just uh, put it back in and. Uh, in there. The tide comes in, I've got a quick chance to have a look at the way. Okay. But uh, what we'll do, uh, this is a special habitat because it's uh, out of sunlight, normally underwater. See all the mussels, different anemones, sea squirts. Sponges, cornline algae, and it's a uh, very nice place. Look at the, see the sponges growing on the mussels. Yeah. All this, you know, there's so much food, it's unbelievable. Don't forget the mussels, don't get too many from the same spot. Yeah? 
These now these are daily anemones within a surge zone uh, of this headland and these anemones they're very powerful with powerful feet which stick to the uh, the rocks so when the uh, the tide comes in there's quite a current comes through here and these anemones they, they're so powerful they will uh, they don't sting humans much but they will certainly uh, eat crabs and fish and other things they come in various colors the greens and we got browns overhang here now in this surge gully we've got a seaweed uh, called dulse delicious seaweed uh, Irish use it uh, they dry it and eat it like uh, like crisps it's got the highest vitamin K content of, uh, of any plant I believe mm. and uh, it's a bit bit chewy to eat as it is it's got a flavour but the thing is, when it's dried and goes crispy, it's delicious. Very mm -hmm. nice. And uh, as you can see at the angle there, it's uh, growing there nicely. In the shade of all things. And if it was uh, exposed to sunlight, there'd be much more of it growing. <laughs> I can't believe guys that this is all meant to be underwater right now. See that black mark? Craig was just saying that that is the sea level. So we are actually below sea level right now when it comes in. Now this is the same exact location two hours later at sunset in golden hour. As you can see we would be standing underwater with no way getting back. It comes in quicker than you think. You have to really respect the tide. Where we got all the razor clams coming over the beach. The tide has already come in so far it comes in very fast so uh, we're just uh, making it back now traversing these barnacles very sharp very sharp but uh, we're getting there see that hole over there that's where we were getting the crabs out of the tides already come in that far Rock sampire, not marsh sampire like the case is here. Uh, if you like carrots, remember the carrot family? Mm -hmm. mm. It's like the big one, big carrots. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But, it, but are you getting a taste of oil or kerosene afterwards? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so it's sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. So, uh, but nice. Yeah. And these are the seeds, not quite formed yet, oh. but uh, we'll stir fry some of these because these are quite nice to taste as well. When they're, when they're ripe, I use these as a spice. Mm. I like this. Yeah? Mm. Good. A very strong taste. Mm. I like this. Yeah, very common. Mm. Have a little taste of that and tell me what you think. Mm. I like this. What can you I get? I never, never thought of something like that. It's very jelly. It's like a hard jelly texture. Mm. It's pretty spicy. Do you, you get the garlic and chilli in it? It's more like spicy, yeah. Yeah? Probably because you've been eating the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Different. Very different. Mm. Do you taste of that? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I got the garlic straight away. Yeah, me. yeah. I got the garlic straight yeah. away. Well, it was more like spicy. Did you get the chilli afterwards? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, it's just there. Really strange. Pepper does, I suppose. Yeah, pepper does. Pepper does, yeah. It is familiar. Hmm? I think one of the snacks that's about like probably seaweed snacks, take something yeah. like that. Yeah, could be. Yeah. I think it's a taste. Oh, oh, it's like a very mild wasabi bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like that. Mm. I like it too much. <laughs> I like it too much, yeah. Well, it's nice, it's, it's not poisonous, it's delicious. You can eat mm. it as much as you want. Mm. Mm. <laughs> these shells now, snails. Oh, yeah. They're, they're dog whelks. Now, what these do, they uh, move around the rocks and they actually eat other snails and the mussels. They've got, see that little slit there? They put a proboscis through there and it'll use acid from his stomach to bore a hole in, uh, in mussels, cockles and barnacles and it'll eat them from the inside. They're edible, they're quite nice to eat. Um, but useful animals, because without these there'd be too much of everything else. Yeah. It's all a balance. Yeah? And then you've got limpets then. Need of introduction. They just the grazing snails, they go over and uh, eat the algae off, uh, off the rocks and they return to their same spot uh, every time. The thing with limpets is it's got the hardest known substance in the animal king kingdom. It's got a part of its teeth which is made up of a special iron compound which is even harder than our enamel and elephant tusk is the hardest, mm -hmm. hardest known substance uh, like in nature. It's so hard it can grind uh, rock down and the volcano barnacles yeah, for obvious reasons they look like volcanoes the barnacles are actually crabs the crustaceans so what happens with these is it's like a it's a crustacean or crab that has cemented its shell to the rock and when the tide comes in for it to feed it'll have instead of claws it'll have little feelers come across and it'll grab the particles from the, the plankton in the water column to eat easy to get and they're kind of delicious you know they live about uh, an inch or so under the sand yeah. and all they do is they, they filter the seawater take out the uh, plankton and the goodness and uh, there you go there's enough now to make make a meal now when we when we cook later yeah i think we've got quite a lot haven't we mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we still have the cockles and the mussels and the razor clams and the rest of the stuff in there are you, are you enjoying that, dude? I really do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. I never thought of walking on our food. <laughs> yeah, is that enough for us, you think? Yeah. Yeah, enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Known as sea potatoes. Member of the starfish family. Looking for a, a hole with a star shape. Normally find them about uh, in three and five inches below. So you use your fingers to go around that way, not to crush it. Urchin, sea potato, member of the starfish family, lives under the sand and feeds on the sand itself. No good to eat, so we'll put it back, just a matter of interest. Beaches, <laughs> beaches full of them. This is uh, one of the logs I've cut from my woodland. It's been seasoned for about a year and a half, two years. It's Douglas fir, uh, known as a Swedish candle. I call them solver stoves in honour of uh, the village of Solver not far away. Um, the way it works is, uh, it's a log, you make cuts with a chainsaw down to so deep and the more cuts the faster it will burn. Kitchen roll on the bottom to act as a wick and some fire lighters in the gaps. So I'm going to pour on now some, uh, could be kerosene or you could use barbecue lighting fluid and that will soak into the uh, kitchen roll then. That will take about 10 minutes to get going fully before we can uh, cook in it. Or a, a bit of wood in the bottom, a tide will come in and it's a bit of driftwood. So yeah. there's no chemicals, no waste, no pollution, there's no uh, aluminium foil and nothing like that. It's just what we'll be eating now, the shells, and they'll just go back into the environment. So it's been a grand day today, um, going around coastal foraging with Craig. I didn't know how much you could actually eat 
from the sea or the coast. Incredible information, incredible guy. But uh, now we're gonna uh, cook up on this uh, Swedish fire candle. And um, we've got a nice skillet from Petromax. I'm gonna get cooking. In nicely. We put in the just a few bits of the rock on fire. A few of the, the seeds. Very strong taste. We don't have too much of that. We put in then the sea spinach or sea beet to build down. It won't take long. I'm just going to add to it then um, strong weed or sea spaghetti. Grilled on rocky shores, being pre cooked, and uh, just like pasta, quite a substantial fill in, uh, fill in meal. Put that in. Just a little bit of garnish, we'll put in some uh, hawthorn berries. That's done now, so we can uh no. done, lovely. Spray that up. Sweetness. Flavor. Well, that will help steam to come up now. You could get fresh water from the stream, but you could use wine, cider, beer, lager. Oh. Anything really. Mm. Okay. Now the thing to eat, the best bit to eat, is this piece, which is the foot. So you can eat the rest, you know, the, the that bit, but that's that's the tastiest that's the piece. Okay. So yeah, have yourself. It is very sweet. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm surprised how nice that is mm. raw. I'll take one off there. Take it off the heat for a bit. Get it burns. We'll get this one back on for a warm enough now just keep very very powerful taste so but is that genuine lobster shells you've ground down yeah, yeah. is that what it is yeah. huh? <laughs> is that mm. so what do you think of the sea spaghetti then love it yeah Oh yeah, full of flavour. Yeah, looking. Mm. So, 
Very common, you don't get it on this show, you get it more towards the west. Right. It's like a deep water species. Generally like yeah. everything. It's rare for me. It is very rare. Yeah, yeah put it in, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll leave them uh, cooking there for a little while. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Let the crab cool down a bit as well. And we'll dispense with the water. Oh, is that the big? That's the smallest one I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and that one. Wow. We've been short changed today, haven't we? Normally they they jump packed full. You know oyster shells? When the oyster's still alive, how do you crack open it? Do you just oh. have to use a special knife for it or yeah. can you use I, it with a normal knife? Yeah, yeah. There. And then you put it in and you've got to cut oh, side to side yeah. because the thing is it's got an adductor muscle that uh. which keeps it tight close together so you've got to cut that and once that's cut then it'll open ah. my favorite crab is spider crab no. these are close second Fantastic day here in Wales, in Hamburgshire with Craig. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. having us. Well, you're very welcome. I, um, yeah. you, you seem to have enjoyed it, I'm sure oh, you have. really yeah, enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I've enjoyed your company, both, both of you. And so, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Learned so much, so much here. And uh, the, the chef in at the end, the food is amazing. Well, it's just something you knock up. It, just, it, it is what it is. You can only cook what you forage, and you can never guarantee you're going to get what you're going to get. So, yeah. so, you might get a lobster, you might get a crab, you might get anything else, you might get fish, dog, you, you name it. Go with the flow, as you, you say. Yeah, literally go with the flow. And, uh, and uh, as earlier, you know, it's uh, sea and trees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to subscribe to um, Craig's channel, what's your channel? Yeah, the channel, my channel is called, very simple, it's Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. Yeah. You'll be very welcome to watch. Yes, so head over, the link is in the description if you like. Tune in next time to do an expedition. Thanks. Yeah, bye then. Bye. <laughs> Getting cold. <laughs> yeah. How's that, how's that for timing? Getting wet. <laughs>